Hello everyone, this is Jackie Williams, and in today's video, I wanna share with you an embossing folder tip that I use quite frequently, and I hope that it will help you in your crafting as well. Now, our embossing folders come in three sizes. We have the six by six, approximately three and a quarter by six, and approximately four by six. And these are all great sizes to have, but sometimes, for example, you wanna use this folder but the piece that you want to emboss is perhaps too wide for your folder. Or perhaps you wanna use this particular print, but the piece you want to emboss is too long for that particular folder. And you can just put it in, emboss it, and then turn it around and emboss the other end. And uh, if it's quite a random pattern, that could work quite well, but sometimes you'll end up with a hard line in between your prints. So I wanted to share with you a way to prevent that from happening. First, I wanna share with you how to emboss a piece that is wider than the folder that you wanna use. Now I'm gonna use this folder that's got like little flowers on it. And this is a new set that comes in this set of three folders and they're just called basic embossing folders. So each one doesn't have an individual name. And I am using Tahitian Tide glitter paper. So I'm gonna put this in about like this. Next, I just wanna show you the plates that we have. Now, um, if you have the Stampin' Up! die cutter, you will have the gray or it used to be blue, so you might have a blue one, embossing folder platform or plate. And then if you have the mini machine, or even if you don't have the mini machine, it's very helpful to have the equivalent of this plate, but in a much smaller size, even if you're using it in the larger machine. So for this example, or for this technique, I'm actually going to use my smaller plate. So I have found that what often gives that, that hard line in between your various embossing sections is actually the edge or the bottom of the folder here. So if you put it through the machine like this, where we're not putting any pressure on that edge of the folder, then you won't get that hard line. Then when we open that up, we'll see that we're partially embossed there. And then I'm just gonna have to, I'm going to move my paper over and I'm just going to line up those embossed flowers as best I can. And then I'm going to repeat the process, taking care to not put any pressure on the edge of that folder. Now it doesn't matter that I'm double embossing here because for this print, I have lined up the existing flowers with the folder or if you're using quite a random folder, then it won't matter at all. And there we go. Now we have a perfectly embossed five by five inch piece of glitter paper using a standard size card front embossing folder. Now here is a sample using that technique, making a square card even with a rectangular folder. And this is using that flower um, embossing folder that I just demonstrated. And then here's a very similar card using the same technique. And this one is using the splatter folder, which is one of the, the three inch folders and just doing that a couple of times across the card. And because that one is quite a random print, you know, you can't see any sort of pattern join at all. Next, I wanna show you how to emboss a, a cardstock that is longer than your folder. So you just place that into your folder. Now for this one, you could use the gray plate, and I like to line it up just where that, little, that black line is there on the folder. But because my paper in this case is actually quite thin, you could also use the thinner plate. In this instance, it really doesn't actually matter too much. So I'll use this one just to show you the two different plates. So again, I'm not putting any pressure on the edge of the folder here so I don't get the line. 
Next, we'll just need to do the other side. So when you take this out of the folder, be careful that you just turn it around. Don't flip it over, otherwise you will have two different embossed looks on each end. And then we're just going to repeat that process. And then the final effect, you have virtually no join at all with your embossing and you can emboss a piece that's up to about 12 inches long. And here is a scrapbook page, can't quite get it all under the camera, where I had these longer strips of embossed pieces. Now, with this particular design, I had stuff going across so I could cover any join, but there's still uh, a good technique there in case you know, the layout that you want to do or design you want to do doesn't have a way to cover any imperfections. Then I've done just a simple wedding card with the painted poppies embossing folder. Again, it's a slimline card, so it was much longer than the embossing folder. So I've just done it in two sections. And with that technique, you can't see any join between the flowers at all. I hope those tips were helpful for you and you find your embossing folders even more useful than before. Please leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, and enjoy the rest of the hop. I'll see you next video. This is Jackie Williams. Bye-bye.